This is Wayla Shambo for WHRO FM. This winter, we're bringing you a virtual chamber music concert series featuring exclusive performances from local musicians. A new concert video premieres each Monday at 5 p.m. on our WHRO Public Media Facebook page, and the audio recordings will also be broadcast on a local touch Wednesday evenings at 9 on WHRO FM. These performances were recorded in November 2020 at the Susan S. Good Fine and Performing Arts Center at Virginia Wesleyan University. This week's performers are flutist Deborah Wendells Cross and harpist Barbara Chapman, both longtime members of the Virginia Symphony. The relationship they've developed over many years of playing together has helped carry them through these challenging times. Hi, I'm Debbie Cross. I am the principal flute player of the Virginia Symphony. Hi, I'm Barbara Chapman, and I'm principal harpist with the Virginia Symphony. So I know you two have been playing together as a duo for a while, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how and when you first started playing together. Like a lot of flute and harp duos, I think we did a lot of weddings when we first started. (laughs) Uh, And then we got much more interested in playing the repertoire that was originally written for the flute and harp. When you play weddings, you're playing arrangements of things. So we started doing some historical research and finding things that were more interesting to play and ended up not playing very many more weddings. <laughs> now we do them for special friends. Debbie and I have always really been project driven. When we met each other 30 years ago when I joined the orchestra, like Debbie said, flute and harp, they sort of gravitate to each other, but became good friends as well. And we always kind of had a common vision about what we wanted to do. We wanted to research, like Debbie said, and we wanted to you know, do, just do some different things, explore some different things. And um, we've done that. We've re- done some recordings together and we've done some arranging and it's, it's been a lot of fun. We've been friends too, so that's just been great. Yeah, what's it like to be able to develop a relationship with another musician over that kind of period of time? I think it's been really interesting actually, particularly now. And I was reflecting on this this last year and we have worked together a lot. And I have grown over the years to anticipate how she breathes. And, and the ensemble is really evident. I mean, people say to us that we play well together. And I, and I, I think there is an ease in what we do. And it, you kind of grow and become together over a long period of time. But it's been really interesting during the pandemic to work together apart. And we've sent videos to each other and we played along with the video and we we've really limited our time significantly together and i think the experience of sort of growing and breathing together for 30 years has has paid off when you spend that amount of time together you end up having coffee and chit chatting and grabbing and it turns out that our husbands are friends too so we we spend a lot of time together and we've, we've known each other for many many years that seems really wonderful to me to be able to have that kind of both musical relationship and, and friendship over many years. That's really special. Could you talk a little more about what your rehearsal process was like, both for this project, and I know you've done some other virtual concerts and at least one outdoor concert during this past year. Well, Barbara did mention about how we sent videos to each other. And we tried to do some of those uh, collab videos where you play into it and then someone plays on top of you. We found that was really difficult. We, We... we're not very technically savvy. So we ended up having to have some help with that. And so what we ended up doing was we would each make our own part. We'd send our part to the other person and they would play along with it and make their part. Then we would send the two separate parts to a technical person who would put them back together again for us. We were able to expand on that when we were rehearsing for our outdoor concerts because We could actually rehearse together that way, lay down a track and send it to the other one and the other one could practice with it. And it sort of depended on who was playing what, uh, which one would play first. 
And so we would transfer things back and forth like that. And um, it worked for the amount of time that we had to spend together during the pandemic. Eventually we did have a few outdoor or socially distanced rehearsals. I never thought during the pandemic that we'd be able to explore anything new. I thought that we would just have to go with what we knew and we had been playing and go back to some of the repertoire we'd played 10 or 15 years ago and pull it out and relearn it because we wouldn't have that kind of rehearsal time. But it's interesting, we have had the opportunity to try some new things because we were open to making a recording of it, sending it down and spending time. And it was so interesting you can spend a lot of time playing with somebody and not really paying attention. But when you're just listening to the audio and you have to really, really dive into what they are doing, how they are phrasing, how, how they are breaking between a phrase and the tempos, we tried not to be metronomic and to be able to sort of feel that with, with someone else by only listening by not getting a visual or not even feeling someone in the room with you. I, I realized that my attention really ramped up for being in an ensemble. And one thing I might add is that Debbie and I are incredibly project driven. And so we have been so grateful this year to have opportunities like this, to have a project and say, okay, I wanna get up in the morning and I'm gonna to practice today because I have a goal. Debbie and Barbara's program for this virtual concert includes settings of traditional music from both North and South America, a Baroque sonata by Michel Blavé, and a piece from the 19th century composer Benjamin Godard. I asked if they had any favorites among the selections. No, not really. We tried to pick a program that had quite a variety. You know, we have something from Baroque era, and then we have a little more romantic era, and then some South American things, and then kind of a folk song setting. So we wanted to do a variety of things, because that's what we do. We, we like it all. We often, when we're planning programs, sometimes we're looking for a theme. Okay, well, we want all French music or all whatever. And sometimes Barbara just says, well, you know what, why don't we just do a program that's music that, that Debbie and Barbara love. <laughs> and that's kind of what these were, I think. Exactly, M music we know and love. And we always go for things that have beautiful melodies. I mean, Debbie just spins a, she spins a beautiful turn. I mean, it's just great. And so to take her away from playing a gorgeous melody is, is wrong. <laughs> Deborah Cross and harpist Barbara Chapman are this week's featured artists in our virtual chamber music concert series, and they'll be playing those beautiful melodies this Monday evening at 5 on the WHRO Public Media Facebook page. You can find the link to watch and the schedule of upcoming performances at whro.org slash virtual concerts. This series is partially supported by funding from the Virginia Commission for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts. For WHRO-FM, I'm Wayla Shambo. Mm -hmm.